Kogi State is in the news and this time its capital Lokoja has been listed as one of the fastest growing cities in the world. And Nigeria's Governor's Forum says former, former General Babangida's commitments to patriotism or and patriotism are reference points to younger generations. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakol. The capital of Kogi State, Lokoja, has been tagged as one of the fastest growing cities in the world. This is according to a report published by the Visual Capitalist. The first on the list is Gwagwalada in Abuja at 6.46, while Lokoja, 5.93%, is at the fourth, just after Rumpanj in Bangladesh. Now, Venture Capitalist uses data from the United Nations to rank the top 20 fastest growing cities in the world in terms of average annual growth uh, from 2020 to 2025. Well, joining us to discuss this is Kingsley Farmer. He is the Kogi State Commissioner for Information and Communications. It's good to have you join us in the studio. Thank you very much. I mean, for any state, this would be very, a very auspicious day. Everybody's excited. I mean, I, I have people saying, really, Kogi, fastest growing. What exactly is happening in Kogi? But let's start by... Uh, the fact that Kogi is in the news for a very, very uh, positive reason. Uh, thank you. Uh, we've always been in the news for positive reasons. Uh, this one uh, is it's a bit tricky. Uh, we are excited that uh, because of the right policies, the right programs, the right projects, uh, the city of Lokoja is now the fourth fastest growing in the world. But we also know that to sustain that, uh, we also need the same uh, quality of projects, programs, and policies uh, to be able to ensure that we, we can cope mm. with that uh, kind of um, expanding population. Uh, so it, it is uh, something uh, that is good news, but also uh, demands uh, more work. Um, because, you know, when we talk about fastest growing cities or big cities, cities that are growing, Lagos comes to mind first, Port Harcourt comes to mind, Abuja comes to mind, but nobody would ever think that a, a city like Lokoja um, would be in the news. But um, the most intriguing thing in this report when I was looking through it is that majority of the cities that are fast growing are African cities. We've seen cities like um, even in Egypt. In fact, um, we see that 17 out of the 20 um, of the cities that were listed are on the African continent, which is a plus for Africa. Um, and most of these cities are located in Nigeria. So it obviously means that the governors are doing something. Um, but let's talk about the economy. I, I, I read an analysis about the fact that um, Nigeria's economy, we all know, is largely based on oil, even though we're trying to diversify, uh, which has made us one of the strongest economies in Africa. But we also know that we have a high bet rate. Our, you know, there's a population yeah. boom of sorts, which is not necessarily a plus for us. It should be a plus for us, but it, it isn't. And we have the almost the highest uh, since tw since 2015, the highest unemployment rate and underemployment rate. So let's zoom into Kogi State now. What is the government doing? Uh, in terms of the youth population, we just celebrated um, World Youth Day, and the the research that we did was showed that a lot of young people are going into drugs and gambling and that's because of the fact that an idle man and idle mind you know what they say is a devil's workshop what is Kogi state government doing uh, in terms of youth empowerment how to engage young people uh, to because that is the gold mine for the country as an administration um, the the present administration of the state has done a lot to empower the youth of the state. Uh, one of the areas is uh, the, the ICT. Uh, we need to build a knowledge-based economy. We need to build an economy through which uh, young people uh, in our state uh, will be able to uh, do a lot to engage uh, themselves. We are not having enough white collar jobs anymore. Uh, so we need to create that environment to create the platform uh, for young people to excel. And if you say you want to take uh, young people away from uh, crimes and criminality, uh, also uh, things like um, 
uh, internet fraud and, and all sorts of, of, of that. You need to give them alternatives. And that's exactly what we are doing. Uh, we are currently working on what, what we call ICT hubs in the state. But also we are training thousands of our youths on how to conduct businesses online. And that is helping a lot of the youth. And you know, the what expertise, sort of the expertise if, they deploy. Yeah. What sort of businesses? Because I'm curious. When you say online business, I want to know what kind of businesses. <laughs> okay. There are a lot of businesses that are online. For instance, we are training youth on how to help people set up um, websites. We are training the youth on how to sell their products online. Like uh, if you are a furniture maker, for instance, you can uh, take advantage of the high traffic on the internet to be able to market your product. Mm -hmm. So we've been able to do this. We've been able to train. I, I know that uh, at a point, we've trained more than 100,000 youth in the state on how to do this. And they are setting up uh, their businesses. Also, Kogi has what we call the Confluence Business Directory uh, that is helping to promote the businesses of young people on that site. It is, it is uh, a, a platform owned by the state government to be able to help young people promote uh, their businesses. So if you are going to um, uh, Kogi State, for instance, and um, you, want, uh, you want to work with the best uh, engineers, uh, civil engineers, you just log so it's in more there. more like a yellow pages there, there. thing. Yeah. So that is exactly what we are doing to be able to help uh, empower our youth using the ICT, the power of the ICT and the explosion in, in how internet could help to market, to reach a larger audience around the world. Uh, also, we've been able to empower our youth through agriculture. Uh, agriculture is uh, where we are going. So instead of uh, just looking at the white collar jobs, we are also now looking at the green collar jobs that we can have in agriculture. And it is, it is helping us a lot because security, peace and security has, have returned to the state. It is, is, it is now easier for people to invest in agriculture in the state. Also because we've been able to stem the tide of crime and criminality in the state, a lot of investors are now coming into the state to invest. You have a very a giant one we call Unicane uh, that is um, working on uh, converting uh, cassava into uh, all sorts of uh, products. So youths are being engaged in these industries. So because we've been able to what create- What are the processes? I'm sorry, we need to break this down because you know, I, I see governments talk about these things um, and most times it's on paper. Oh, we're doing this and we're doing that. But in reality, when you go down to it, the farmers and the young people who are supposed to participate tell you that the process is so tough and the bottlenecks are so many, the bureaucracies can be so daunting that it's very difficult for the average young person to get access to it. How are you making sure that this is not politicized, this is not, um, yes, of course, government will say they have the best interest at heart, but how do you make sure that this is not taken advantage of by, you know, the people who want to politicize when, the whole when, when issue? When you look at the administration of al Haji Hayabelo, it is an administration driven by the youth. So you, you don't have to go through that bureaucracy Anybody can to be able that? to access this. Mm -hmm. It is made of very young people. You have the average age of, the of people serving in the administration to be 41. So that tells you that even the youth on the street, they, they can connect. They, they find it very difficult to connect with people in government. They could access government programs, policies, and projects. And that's what is uh, working in the state. Before the advent of the present administration, you discover that crime and criminalities were, were very dominant. You know, if you are passing through Kogi, you're always afraid of uh, kidnapping, banditry, and all sort of things like that. But today, those youth are gainfully uh, engaged in productive ventures. Interesting. Yeah. Now, let's talk about you know security because you've been mentioning it here and there. Uh, it's a main, it's a fun burner issue in Nigeria. We've been talking about it every day. It's one thing in the northwest. I mean, even down south here, we have our own problems. Um, what is that thing that Kogi State has done? Because no foreign direct investment will come if a place is not safe and secure for businesses to be done. Um, what does Kogi State know that? the rest of the country doesn't. Maybe we all have to come to you and ask for help. <laughs> it is a multi-pronged ap approach to solving the security challenges that we faced when we first uh, came into uh, uh, the administration, first came into uh, the state. Uh, you know, it was the kidnapped capital of Nigeria. It was a very tough one. Banditry, religious crisis, uh, violence, bank robberies, and all that. But what happened was we deployed 
practical approaches that could help solve that like, very serious problem. For instance, like. we started by ensuring that we provide logistics for security agencies. I, I, I could remember that within the first six months of the administration, the governor procured over 240 patrol vans for security operatives to be able to move around. It's, it's going to be very difficult in the modern world if you want to uh, curb uh, criminality and your security agents are not mobile. So that, that was the first thing we did. The other, the, other, uh, uh, the, the next level was to digitalize our security architecture uh, to ensure that um, if, if, you are, if you kidnap someone anywhere through some of our, the technology we put in place, we could see where you are keeping them. We could see where criminals are, anywhere they are in the state from the control room. These are some of the things that were deployed uh, by the administration. And also, we decided to localize our security architecture. You cannot depend completely on the conventional security agents to be able to solve uh, the problem of insecurity. So we started with our vigilante service. We dusted that law and ensured that thousands of youths were engaged as vigilante uh, operatives uh, to work with the conventional security uh, agents in the state. Also, we are making use of our local hunters, and we are one of the first states to start the constabulary, the community policing uh, in Nigeria. So all of this, when you put all of this together, uh, it shows that we are able to come everywhere and ensure that uh, we are the safest state in the uh, country today. And in terms of the farmer header crisis, um, I do not know how much of that uh, rubbed off on Kogi State, but um, how were you able to conquer that? Because farmers would keep telling you that they're unable to go to their farms, and that's why, we, and you know we're having a food crisis of sorts, yeah, even the I, IMF I, has pointed I, I to it. I think the Kogi model would be able to help a lot of states, a, a good number of states in, in Nigeria. If we stop politicizing that issue, we will get it right. What do you mean by if we stop politicizing? Who's politicizing it? Okay, the point is this. When we keep complaining all the time about the activities of headsmen and how they destroy farmlands and also uh, disturb farming uh, 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 operations, then we, are not, we, are, we should stop complaining and take practical steps to solve the problem. What we are doing in Kogi State, let me tell you what we are doing in Kogi State. In Kogi State, we've been living with all these Fulani people over the years. They've always been with us. But they've been so with it, us it, in it, every it, other state yeah, across the it, country. It, it means that if some people are now uh, criminals among them, it's easy when you work with the leadership of the Fulanese in your state, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to sieve out those that are criminals among them. Let me, let me, I, let me give I'm you... I'm sorry, let me I'm going to no, push you. you. No, no, let me no, tell no. you this. I, let, I'm let, sorry. No, let me tell you this. Let's use, for example, yeah. Kano State. Okay. Uh, Kaduna State, I beg your pardon. It okay. seems to be a kidnap haven right now. And so they keep doing it time after time. Let's also look at Governor Zulum. You're telling me that a Governor Zulum is not working with the Fulani chiefs in his state. You're telling me that a, an El Rufai is not doing the same. You're telling me that all of these states that are experiencing this, the, the banditry over and over again, that they do not know that they should be liaising would, with these guys? I would not, I would or are not. you saying that the Fulani men in those states are uncooperative? Which is it? Okay, I will not be able to speak for those states. I okay. can only speak for Kogi State. What we are doing in Kogi State is to work with the leadership of the Fulanis in the state. In every community, there are community committees dealing with security. These Fulanis are part of the committee. So if anything happens anywhere, you could bring them. They will get those who have caused that problem immediately. So it is working. When you, when you localize your security architecture, it will work for you. So instead of complaining about what is happening, we decided to call them and say, yes, every society has criminals. Every society. It is not just the Fulanis. Every society has people who would always want to act contrary to the norm, to the other in that society. So because of that, we need to always strive to ensure that criminals, whether they are Fulanis, whether they are, regardless of the tribe uh, they belong to, we are able to sieve them out and deal with them appropriately. So we are not, we are not covering uh, any Fulani criminal in our state, just like we don't cover anybody that is a criminal, either you are from the state or from anywhere. So when you work with the leadership of the Fulanis, then you'll be able to achieve 
uh, peace and security. Let's talk about infrastructural development because uh, in the main city, which is Lakoja, the reason why we're having this conversation, um, we know that Nigeria is a one city country where the states have just one city. It's very difficult to see um, Lagos have Lagos and Ekbe as you know, more cities. You always have Calabar, which is Cross River, Lokoja, which is, and so we do not have too many cities in one state, which is rare. Um, but so this also now attracts a lot of people from the urban, rural areas into the urban city, which also causes a population problem, housing, and all of the other problems that have called insecurity comes along with that. Um, what is the government doing? Have, have you initiated any um, policies and programs to grow the, in, the, the main city? Uh, what is the infrastructure like? The last time I, I, I spoke to somebody about Kogi State, that was years ago, uh, they talked about bad roads, uh, they talked about payment, non-payment of salaries, owing of salaries. So what is the government doing now? Because if it is a fa the fastest growing, then there has to be certain policies and programs that have been put in place. Thank you very much. Um, as, as far as uh, we are concerned as a state, uh, I would even say we've concentrated uh, efforts more on the need to develop the rural areas. I would say that 80% of our capital projects uh, are in the rural areas. And uh, when, that's why when, if you go to places like Ankwa, you see the township road there, uh, Kaba Township Road is ongoing, uh, in, Oke, in Adavi, in Ijoa, in the, all those places, they are rural places. And all these projects, all these big projects are there. So, but you know, we know that we are going to pay a lot of price for this growing uh, population uh, in Lokoja. Uh, because when you are the safest state among about 12 states that are surrounding you, mm -hmm. then you should expect that uh, there will be a lot of migration. Uh, and, and that is going to uh, place a lot of demands and responsibility on you as a state to be able to do that. So we're expanding on our infrastructure uh, in Lokoja. A lot of road, a lot of, uh, road construction work are ongoing. Uh, when people complain about the roads in Lokoja, the main place where they complain about is where we call the Ganaja, uh, Ganaja Junction. If you are going to the south, south, southeast, southwest, you must pass through uh, Ganaja Junction. It, it has always been a very big problem. But I can, I can tell you for free that as we are speaking here, uh, the project to put a fly over there is, is going on steadily. And we, we hope that uh, before the end of the year, we'll be able to complete uh, that very massive project. In terms of water supply, we are doing uh, a lot to be able to provide enough water for the green population uh, of Lokoja. And also, we are upscaling our medical facilities and equipment and um, uh, you know, infrastructure to be able to uh, cope with uh, the green population. The specialist hospital is, is, um, is being uh, upgraded as we speak. The project is ongoing. And uh, also, uh, we are doing a lot in terms of providing uh, schools uh, for our children. And, you I'm going to come to that. Thank you for, right. for going into that. Okay. But before we talk about the schools, let's talk about the health facilities. Uh, and I'm, I'm not going to be speaking from head knowledge. I have visited many hospitals across this country, and they're mostly an eyesore, especially state hospitals, general hospitals, health posts. Uh, when I was growing up, we, you could, for every mile you took, you would find a health post or um, uh, um, public health post. But those things seem to have been disappearing in the country, and this is detail for every state in the country. Um, what is Kogi State doing about those reviving those health posts? I remember, uh, I think in 20, between um, 2009 and 2013, if I'm not mistaken, Cross River used to be number one in terms of you know, public health. Um, what is the public health system like in Kogi State? Uh, thank you very much. You, you, are very, you are very correct with that um, assessment. We inherited such a public uh, health institution uh, in our state. Uh, but we, we, we will not complain. What we'll do is to uh, roll the sleeves and, and immediately uh, start hit the ground running to ensure that we provide uh, health care uh, to our people. It is, a, it is the responsibility of government. And right now we are doing a lot in that regard. In 2018, uh, we did massive work on the specialist hospital, which provides uh, medical uh, service to a very uh, large number of our people. Uh, but we've moved away from that. That's not enough. We need to ensure that we do not have to bring somebody from Ida to the specialist hospital in Lokoja. Uh, what we are doing right now, 
the Ida Zona Hospital, which has been upgraded to a, a specialist hospital, uh, we've, we've just upgraded it and it's it's fully functional now. So you're telling uh, me that also, if I go to Ida now, yeah. Also, if you it, go to Ida now, it is up to the par of a proper specialist hospital. Proper. Because specialist I have hospital. seen many hospitals in terms of structure, in terms of facilities. I've seen so many commissioned hospitals in that of, you in, cannot use. In terms of equipment. It would rank with any specialist hospital. I will anywhere. come to local job because I will no do a follow-up on this. Everything you've said, so I have it on tape and I'll I will do it. I will take you around so that you could see all of this. I, I, and, and you're also, saying this on camera. I will be in local <laughs> job. We will do it. And no, I will be it's sure not a to check And anything. also in Isolu in uh, Kogi West, we are also putting the zona a hospital there in, in the next six months. We should be able to commission that. Uh, apart from that, in Gegu, uh, because when you are coming to Abuja, uh, from Lokoja, uh, you you pass through Yegu. It's, it's a very uh, it's a heavily trafficked road. So we, we are putting the same uh, the same model of hospital there at Yegu. And in the next six months, we are doing all of this simultaneously because we released over four billion in January to ensure that we are able to complete all of these projects this year. And also, you have the referral hospital in Okene, which is which is um, going to be. I, I'm not going to say the best, but one of the best in this country because of the kind of facilities that uh, we are currently putting there. Uh, you know, as I was sitting in here, they sent me a picture. So taking delivery of um, uh, the, the kind of ambulances, the life support, advanced life support ambulances that mm. uh, we are going to be using uh, at the hospital. So these are some of the things that we are doing to, to ensure that we, uh, we, make, we make our people uh, have this confidence in public health institutions. Uh, we, they don't have to go to private hospitals. We are developing our, our public uh, health institutions to be able to deal with uh, all kind of health emergencies that we might have. Let's talk about education and public education. I'm a product of public education. I went to public schools as compared to my brother okay. um, who went to private school. I went to public school. I went to a federal university. And just before, just before I graduated, it became watered down, the whole system. Um, and, and this also goes for primary and secondary education in so many states. So many states have jettisoned the upgrade of these schools. I have, I have gone to schools where there are no roofs. I was in Kaduna State. I, I saw some schools that the UN is trying to help to re-roof. Um, um, UNICEF, I beg your pardon. Um, I've seen states um, like Rivers where there are schools that children still sit on the floor. For education and, and I think this happens across the country so I don't think Kogi is left out of it. Um, most times you see politicians pick a few schools and refurbish them because they have an agenda, you, especially your governor wants to run for president so I'm guessing that he must have done that. What If I were to go to a, a totally somewhere very far away from Lokoja to take a look at your pu public education, your secondary and your primary schools in your rural areas, will I see an abandoned education sector? No, you, you won't say that. We inherited um, the education sector that was uh, likely uh, in shambles when we came uh, into office. But the governor also went through public schools, public schools, right from primary school to secondary school and the university. And you know, he perfectly understands the need to be able to ensure that our public uh, educational institutions are in great shape. As I speak to you, we started what we call the Blue Roof Revolution uh, in our primary schools. And if you go to any village in Kogi State today, I'm not just talking about Lokoja, I'm talking about any village in any ward, in any local government, you will see blocks of new, brand new blocks of classrooms. A few schools or every roofs. school? Yeah. Every school? Every school. Go to every school. Go to any village, any village in go. Lokoja. You will see the Blue Roof uh, classrooms. Uh, we have done this so that we make public schools attractive. That is better than most of the private schools that you have around. And also, we've been able to ensure that our teachers uh, go through periodic training and you know, welfare incentives that will make them to be able to deliver on the job. And apart from that, we are doing also model secondary schools. We've not been able to cover every ward in the state, but we are doing uh, we are going at our own pace because of um, resources, and we are very sure that before the end of this uh, administration, we'll be able to complete a good number of those things. Also, we've done a lot in the tertiary institutions. If you go to Kogi State Polytechnic today, eh, let them give you pictures of how that school was in 2016. You will see a departure from the past. 
the Kogi State University is witnessing the same thing, and we established the Confluence University of Science and Technology to be able to provide manpower because we are the minerals capital of Nigeria. Uh, you have more than 20 mineral resources in Kogi State. So, and we know that we have a lot of these industries there. We know that the Ajakuta State Company is also there. So we need to provide manpower to be able to feed these industries. And that led to the uh, establishment of the Confluence University of Science and Technology in Osara. Let's talk for foreign direct investments. Um, according to reports by the National Bureau of Statistics, um, Ekiti, Kogi, Delta, Bayelsa, Eboni, Gombe, Jigawa, Oyo, Ondo, Boronu, and Cross River states. In fact, 15 other state governments failed to attract foreign direct investments in 2020. Now, it means that none of these states and their governors contributed to the 23.988 billion dollars the other states uh, and the federal capital territory attracted in 2020. A development contrary to the electoral promises that all of these governors have made. So can you help us understand why you made this list, but then you're not attracting investments? We're attracting investments. Um, it, it takes, it, it takes, but this is no, it takes an it, MBS no, no. report. There will, be, there will be another one in 2021. It takes a, it's a process. It's a whole lot of process before some of these things could come into fruition. We, have, we are working on a LAPA processing zone, uh, agricultural processing zone at LAPA. And uh, we know that um, uh, within the next one year, it is going to be a massive one uh, because it means that even all the cassava produced in Kogi Benue will not be enough to feed uh, the plant there. So, and they want to be converting it to ethanol. So it, it's, it's a massive thing that we are How many more years uh, does your on. governor have to be in office? Because you're saying it will, it we'll will, still, it will. We'll still be, you've we'll had still be in office till 2024. Exactly. So, um, so when you say we will, and when we they are, will. And when they are talking about 2020, have you seen the report for 2019? Have you seen the report for 2018? Well, well 2019 just, is Unicane behind just, us. 2020 Unicane is just, just yesterday. Unicane so. just came. Unicane and just we're still came. in the middle of 2021. Okay. Unicane just came. It is a, it is a foreign company uh, that is operating in Kogi State today. That will not be listed for 2020. So it doesn't mean that this administration has not been attracting a foreign investment into the state. We've been doing that. This is the report for 2020. Exactly. And, and I'm you asking, know, and you knew what, what did you do you in 2020 that you did you not even attract one right, you, knew what, you knew perfectly what happened in 2020. What happened? The issue of COVID-19. Oh, that, just, that your state doesn't believe in, and even you shouldn't if you have bothered your direct even if you investment. Even if you don't believe, even if you, you don't believe, believe in it, it, then you will continue. No, no, even if you don't believe in it, so those that it? are supposed to bring their investment, don't they believe in it? What was the traffic to Nigeria from all these foreign investors in 2020? Okay, well, so we, we can't use that. We can't FBI. use that to rate. We attracted in 2017, 2018. 2019, what happened in 2020 probably affected all of these states that you have mentioned. They've been attracting foreign uh, okay. direct investment. Because we're almost running out of time. Um, aside from the effect of COVID-19, uh, you know, um, could this also mean that, you know, either that necessary steps were not taken by governments to attract this investment, or could it also mean that investors saw no attraction in your state or your environment? And you've told me that your, your security is up to par. you told me that your infrastructure development is number one. Uh, your, your health equipment, I mean, everything you're saying is state of the art. And we really need to go there. I'm going to tell my producer we have to uh, come to Kogi State and do some feasibility studies to okay. be sure that everything you've told us. But in... Um, what going forward? Um, what is the plan of you? Because one minute your your governor wants to run for president, um, how do you hope to carry on with all of these things that I can tell that are still ongoing, uh, without it being stopped? Government is a continuum, but of course we see that every government comes up with its own agenda and projects. So how do you hope let, that you would continue this project? Let me let me tell you this. Kogi is very attractive. After the about the mineral, I mean the mineral resources that we have and. Um, uh, just, I think this year, early this year, the goat processing uh, plant for the entire North Central uh, was sited in Kogi State. So this is going to attract a lot. Also, uh, you are talking about a state that is um, uh, hosting the biggest cement factory in the entire Africa. So it's attractive, and they know that it's attractive, and they have been coming to the state. Uh, like I said, it's just the 2020 uh, uh, report. We expect that this year it's going to be uh, a lot different, and we did a lot in 2017, 2018, and also 2019. Uh, having said that, the governor is focused. 
And that is why he's still doing all of these projects, despite the call on him to run for the 2023 uh, presidency. He remains focused. As I'm talking to you, you can put a call to anybody in Kaba. The Kaba Township Road is, 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 is undergoing massive reconstruction as we speak. So he's, he remains focused, and he's going to continue to do that until, until his last day in office. Well, I can assure you that. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, Kingsley Fowler is the Commissioner for Information and Communication in Kogi State. Thank you very much for being our guest. Thank you. All right, we'll take a short break. And when we come back, the Nigeria Governors Forum tells us what they think about IBB's legacy as he turns a year older. We'll be right back.